IBGN Utility in JCL is a quick and easy way to copy and print non-VSAM sequential data set. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel and the topic for today's session is IBGN Utility in JCL. So before I start with today's presentation, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have already subscribed to our channel, then I would like to say a big thank you for your subscription. So let's get started with today's agenda. So we start today's session with an introduction to IBGener Utility. After that, we will look into the different DD statements of IBGener Utility and how you can use those DD statements to copy dataset or take backups. In third section, I'll try to explain the basic difference between IBGen Utility and IEB Copy Utility. And in last section, I'm going to showcase a couple of sample JCL so that you can understand how you can use IBGen Utility to perform multiple tasks such as create, reformat, copy, backup, or print non-VSAM sequential dataset. So before we start with IBGen Utility, Let's try to answer or let's try to understand what is JCL utility or what do you understand by the term utility. So in layman term, mainframe utility programs or just utilities are the programs that can be used for common data processing functions like copying or printing a data set. These utilities are supplied with IBM ZOS and they are widely used in batch jobs. Now let's talk about IBGN Utility. The IBGN Utility is a copy program that has been a part of operating system since the first release of OS 360. One of its many use is to copy a sequential dataset, a member of partition dataset or PDSE or probably ZOS Unix system services files such as HFS files. As a result, this utility can be used to backup or restore sequential datasets. You can also use this utility to print a non-VSAM sequential dataset by copying it to a sysout dataset. Finally, the common use of IBGN utility is to create, reformat and backup non-VSAM sequential datasets. Now let's try to understand what are the different DD statements that are required by an IBGN utility. So there are four different DD statements that are required by an IBGN utility. So the first one is sysut1 and it is used to specify the input file. The second DD statement is sysut2 and it is used to specify the output file. The third one is sysprint. It is an output message file and the last one is sysin and it is used to specify the control parameters. And if you do not want to use control statement, the sysin DD statement is still required. So you must code it as dummy dataset. Now let's try to understand what are the different steps you need in a JCL and how you can invoke uh, IBGN utility with the help of a bad job. So in order to execute an IBGN utility from a bad job, you need three kinds of control statement. First one is a job card, which would provide all the information related to your shop. Then you need an execute statement to invoke the IBGN utility. After that, you need couple of DD statements and session card that is required in case if you are just doing reformat. And in case if you're not doing any kind of reformat, then you need to specify session as dummy. So here's a sample JCL that outline how an IBGN utility is used to take backup. So the first two step is a job card. After that, you have comment section. Then step 01 is actually executing your IBGN utility. Then you have sysut1 and sysut2 DD statement, which is used to specify the input and output file. After that, you have sysprint followed by sysin. And in this case, I do not specify any control parameters. So I've used sysin DD as dummy. Now, before I show the live demonstration of how you can use IBGN utility to perform various operation, let me ask an interview question. So the question is, what is the basic difference between IBGN utility and IEB copy utility? If you know the answer, then write down in the comment section. Otherwise, 
I'll give you the correct answer in the last section of this presentation. So here's my sample JCL and it includes four different steps and each step is doing a specific task. Now let me quickly explain the JCL. So the first two line is a job card which will provide all the information related to your shop. After that, I've included basic description about the job and it is always a good practice that you should write some lines about the job or the step which is being used in your JCL so that anybody can understand what exactly this job is doing. Then the first step of this JCL is to take the backup of data set with the help of IBGenet utility. And if you notice, step 01 is invoking IBGenet utility and the input data set is provided with the help of sysut1dd statement. And the backup data set name is provided with the help of sysut2dd statement. The sysindd statement is coded as dummy because I am not using any control parameters while copying data from the input file to the output file. In step 2, I have used ibgener utility to print the dataset in spool. So in order to print the dataset in spool, what I have done is, I have just provided sysut2dd statement with sysout equals to star. However, there is no change in other dd statements of this particular step. Step 3 of this JCL showcase how you can use ibgener utility to copy a member of PDS from one PDS to other PDS. And finally, step 4 of this JCL showcase how you can use ibgener utility to reformat data while copying it from source file to the destination file. So in this case again I've used sysut1 to provide the input file and sysut2 to provide the output file. And in this case, I've used sysindd statement to provide additional control parameters so that it can reformat data while copying from source to destination file. Now let me quickly explain the control card. As you know that you can use IBGenre utility to arrange or convert data format as you copy the data set. So in this case, the generate statement summarizes the specification that you provide in the record statement. And the record statement provides the specification of the fields of the output record. Now the generate statement uses two subparameters. First one is max field and the second one is max limit. So max field is used to specify the number of field parameters in a record statement. And max limit is used to specify the number of bytes of literal data set included in the field parameter in record statement. Now before explaining the record fields, let me explain the input file. So if you look at the right hand side of your screen, this is the input file that I'll be using for step four. So the file has four different columns. First one is employee ID. After that you have employee name. After that you have department code. And the last column is employee salary. Now requirement is to prefix the salary of an employee with a static information that is EMP space cell hyphen. And to accomplish this requirement, I've added record field statement in Sysin. Now let me quickly explain the record field parameter of Sysin. The record field parameter accept four different subparameters. First one is length, which is the length of the field in the input record. Second one is location or literal. The location would be the starting position of the field in the input record. And in case if you want to hard code something specific or some static string, then you can use literal over there. The next one is conversion and it is the conversion operation to be performed on the field. And the last one is out location. So this is the starting position of the field in the output record. So the value of first subparameter is 23 comma 1 comma space comma 1. So it says like I would be copying first 23 byte from the input file and the starting position of the input uh, file is 1 and the starting position of output file is 1 and I'm not using any kind of conversion so my conversion is specified as spaces. The next set of subparameter is to include static string as per our requirement. So the subparameters are 8 which is the total length of the static string that is emp space cell hyphen. After that you have conversion so we are not doing any conversion so I've specified the spaces and after that I've specified the starting position of the output file and that is 24. 
Similarly, the last set of parameter is to copy the salary column from an input file to the output file. Now let me quickly submit the job and show you the output. Now the job is submitted and we have got the job number. Let me just click on that and it's retrieving the information. So our job is completed with max CC zero. Now let me showcase uh, the output of this particular job. So let me close this particular window and on the first column you have your JCL and in next column I have my input and output file. Third column also showcase the output of the JCL that is sysout and the member which is being copied in step three. Now if you notice column three, it is actually showing the data set which was printed in spool by step zero two. Now again, column three showcase the PDS member which was copied to a backup PDS in step zero three. Now let me showcase the output file which is generated by step 04 and in this file we have prefixed the salary of an employee with a static string that is EMP space sal hyphen followed by employee salary. So this is how you can use ibgener utility in JCL to create, reformat or take backups of non-VSAM sequential datasets. Now coming back to our original question that is what is the basic difference between IB general and IAB copy? Well, the correct answer is that both utilities are used for data processing. IB general utility is used for non-VSAM sequential data set. It is used to copy, create, print or reformat data set as you copy. On the other hand, you have IEB copy, which is primarily used to perform operation on personal data set or PDSE. It is used to copy, merge, compress or archive a PDS into a sequential file. So ladies and gentlemen, this marks an end to our today's session. And if you have any question related to IB general utility, then do mention your question in the comment section. I'm going to respond back after this presentation. Apart from that, we have recently published a complete series of interview questions on COBOL, VSAM, KICS, DB2 and JCL. And in case if you are looking for a job change, then I would request you all to go and check out those videos and I'm sure they would be beneficial in your job interview. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video and please consider subscribing to our channel and do share this video with your friends and family member. Thank you so much.